God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. I'm Father Jonathan Rowe. I'm the parish priest at St. Michael's Anglican Church, and I want to thank you for joining us for this service of evening prayer on Thursday, the 2nd of April. <clears throat> I'm going to take a moment. We'll take a moment to calm our hearts and minds, to be calm, to be still, to prepare for worship. And I'll light a candle. You can do the same as well. Light a candle to symbolize the prayers of the scattered church ascending into heaven even when we can't gather for worship together. The service of evening prayer will begin on page 20 in the Book of Common Prayer. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The psalms appointed for this evening are Psalms 140 and 142, beginning on pages 511 and 513. Deliver me, O Lord, from the evil man, and preserve me from the wicked man, who imagine mischief in their hearts, and stir up strife every day. They have sharpened their tongues like a serpent. Adder's poison is under their lips. Keep me, O Lord, from the hands of the ungodly. Preserve me from the wicked men who are purposed to overthrow my goings. The proud have laid a snare for me and spread a net abroad with cords. Yea, and set traps in my way. I said unto the Lord, Thou art my God. Hear the voice of my prayers, O Lord. O Lord God, thou strength of my health, thou hast covered my head in the day of battle. Let not the ungodly have his desire, O Lord. Let not his mischievous imagination prosper. A slanderer shall not prosper upon the earth. Evil shall hunt the wicked person to overthrow him. Sure I am that the Lord will avenge the poor, and maintain the cause of the helpless. The righteous also shall give thanks unto thy name, and the just shall continue in thy sight. I cry unto the Lord with my voice, yea, even unto the Lord do I make my supplication. I pour out my complaint before him, and show him of my trouble. When my spirit was in heaviness, thou knewest my path. In the way wherein I walk, have they privily laid a snare for me. I looked also upon my right hand, and saw that there was no man that would know me. I had no place to flee unto, and no man cared for my soul. I cried unto thee, O Lord. I said, Thou art my refuge and my portion in the land of the living. Consider my complaint, for I am brought very low. O oh, deliver me from my persecutors, for they are too strong for me. Bring my soul out of prison, that I may give thanks unto thy name. Then shall the righteous resort unto my company, for thou dealest bountifully with me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. 
The first lesson is written in the book Exodus, the seventh chapter, beginning at the twenty-fifth verse. Seven days passed after the Lord had struck the Nile. Then the Lord said to Moses, Go into Pharaoh and say to him, Thus says the Lord, Let my people go, that they may serve me. But if you refuse to let them go, behold, I will plague all your country with frogs. The Nile shall swarm with frogs, which shall come up into your house, and into your bedchamber, and on your bed, and into the houses of your servants and of your people, and into your ovens and your kneading bowls. The frogs shall come up on you and on your people and on all your servants. And the Lord said to Moses, Say to Aaron, Stretch out your hand with your rod over the rivers, over the canals, and over the pools, and cause frogs to come upon the land of Egypt. So Aaron stretched out his hand over the waters of Egypt, and the frogs came up and covered the land of Egypt. But the magicians did the same by their secret arts, and brought frogs upon the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh called Moses and Aaron, and said, Entreat the Lord to take away the frogs from me and from my people, and I will let the people go to sacrifice to the Lord. Moses said to Pharaoh, Be pleased to command me when I am to entreat, for you and for your servants and for your people, that the frogs be destroyed from you and your houses and be left only in the Nile. And he said, Tomorrow. Moses said, Be it as you say, that you may know that there is no one like the Lord our God. The frogs shall depart from you and your houses and your servants and your people. They shall be left only in the Nile. So Moses and Aaron went out from Pharaoh, and Moses cried to the Lord concerning the frogs, as he had agreed with Pharaoh. And the Lord did according to the word of Moses. The frogs died out of the houses and courtyards and out of the fields. <coughs> Excuse me. The frogs died out of the houses and courtyards and out of the fields, and they gathered them together in heaps, and the land stank. But when Pharaoh saw that there was a respite, he hardened his heart and would not listen to them, as the Lord had said. Then the Lord said to Moses, Say to Aaron, Stretch out your rod and strike the dust of the earth, that it may become gnats throughout all the land of Egypt. And they did so. Aaron stretched out his hand with his rod and struck the dust of the earth, and there came gnats on man and beast. All the dust of the earth became gnats throughout all the land of Egypt. The magicians tried by their secret arts to bring forth gnats, but they could not. So there were gnats on man and beast. And the magicians said to Pharaoh, This is the finger of God. But Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he would not listen to them, as the Lord had said. Here endeth the first lesson. The service of evening prayer continues with the Magnificat on page 21. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Saviour. For he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He hath showed strength with his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seat, and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He, remembering his mercy, hath holpen his servant Israel, as he promised to our forefathers, Abraham and his seed forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The second lesson is written in the Gospel according to St. Mark, 
the tenth chapter, beginning at the seventeenth verse. And as Jesus was setting out on his journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. Do not kill, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not bear false witness, do not defraud, honor your father and mother. And he said to him, Teacher, all these I have observed from my youth. And Jesus, looking upon him, loved him and said to him, You lack one thing. Go, sell what you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. And come, follow me. At that saying, his countenance fell, and he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. And Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it will be for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were amazed at his words. But Jesus said to them again, Children, how hard it is for those who trust in riches to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And they were exceedingly astonished and said to him, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, With men it is impossible, but not with God, for all things are possible with God. Peter began to say to him, Lo, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or lands for my sake and for the gospel, who will not receive a hundredfold now in this time, houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions, and in the age to come eternal life. But many that are first will be last, and the last first. Here endeth the second lesson. The service of evening prayer continues with the Nunc Dimittis on page 22. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace, according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. 
Give peace in our time, O Lord, and evermore mightily defend us. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. We beseech thee, Almighty God, mercifully to look upon thy people, that by thy great goodness we they may be governed and preserved evermore, both in body and soul. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, who hatest nothing that thou hast made, and dost forgive the sins of all them that are penitent, create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of thee the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee, we being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness. Through the merits of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of thy only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, who art afflicted in the afflictions of thy people, regard with thy tender compassion those in anxiety and distress. Bear their sorrows and their cares, supply all their manifold needs, and help both them and us to put our whole trust and confidence in thee. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. (laughs) Almighty God, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, went about doing good and healing all manner of sickness and disease among the people, continue, we beseech thee, this his gracious work among us, especially in those working to contain the spread of the coronavirus. Cheer, heal, and sanctify the sick. Grant to physicians, surgeons, and nurses wisdom and skill, sympathy, and patience. And send down thy blessing upon all who labor to prevent suffering and to forward thy purposes of love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you this time to call to mind some way in which you have seen God at work in the world. Where have you seen the kingdom of God breaking into this world? Give thanks for the experience that you've had this past day, and pray for the grace and strength and courage to join in with what God is doing in the world. Almighty God, who hast given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, Thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come life everlasting. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. Again, thank you for joining us in prayer this morning. I hope that you, this evening, I hope that you'll be able to join us as well for morning prayer tomorrow at 7 o'clock Newfoundland time. Until then, be good, God bless, and take care of each other. Bye-bye.